This adorable little thing is Cubio, and it's not a 3D printer, it's a laser engraver. And in this video, I'll tell you all about it. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. Cubio reached out to me due to some unusual circumstances. You see, at the end of 2018, there were scam websites popping up promising to sell tech products at ridiculously low prices. And well, Cubio was one of those unfortunate products that these criminals were using to promote their scams. I made a warning video, several in fact, and it helped a lot of people avoid those scams and the real Cubio team reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test the real thing. And I said yes. Cubio is small, really small, and it arrives in spectacular looking packaging with a max working area of 100 by 100 millimeters. It has a 1,600 milliwatt blue laser diode, which is low power by commercial laser cutter standards, but still capable of engraving many materials such as wood, plastic, and cutting thin paper, card, and fabric. Primarily though, it's really for engraving. Before I got into 3D printing, I actually worked with laser cutters full time as a job, and I actually have a lot of respect for just how dangerous they can be, because one mistake and bam, you're blind. Even though it's not as powerful as an industrial system, the laser in the Cubio laser engraver is still serious and capable of injury. With this in mind, I'm happy to say that Cubio team has taken safety super seriously. This is really refreshing compared to literally every other small laser system on the market currently. I've actually taken in some in the past I've refused to review because they've been so dangerous, but this is different. They sell an enclosure called the Cubio Shield, which captures the laser. This is the unit itself. This is all the actual shield itself. It captures the laser radiation with several layers of safety, such as switches detecting if the cover's in place, safety glasses in the box, and a built-in filter. The app also has a password lock before the laser can even be fired, so that means you need to know the password, and the machine emits a constant beeping during operation. These settings can be messed with and some of them disabled when you put the machine into expert mode. However, you are always required to enter the laser password before the machine will fire the laser. This is all great to see and I'll walk you through the app in a minute. However, I simply cannot endorse the use of the laser engraver in an open air environment like they demonstrated in some of these videos. No matter how many safety checks and glasses you provide, you simply can't completely control an environment with other people in it. You need a physical enclosure to contain the laser radiation at all times, in my opinion. Because of this, all of my tests will be done using the provided enclosure, and I won't even be considering the unit standalone. I will be considering it as a package. Some of you may feel this is an overreaction, but again, I'm not risking my eyesight or the eyesight of others for the sake of making pretty engravings. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. By the same token, not all materials can be etched or cut. Remember, we are burning material here, not just melting it. In fact, many common materials you'll find around the home release toxic fumes if burnt. Take PVC, for example, an incredibly common plastic. It releases hydrogen chloride gas, which forms hydrochloric acid on contact with water. And take MDF, an incredibly common wood product. It can also release formaldehyde gas when burnt, depending on the grade of MDF. And in Australia, most of it's got formaldehyde in it. So, you will need to do some serious research into the materials that you can and cannot cut or engrave on this system to ensure it's safe. For example, water engraved leather, well, that's fine, but are you sure it's real leather? Because fake leather, or pleather, is actually PVC plastic. The super nasty acid gas one, remember? Yeah, please do your research. Even though the Cubio does have a little filter and it does wick the smoke away from the cutting area, it doesn't seem to do too much to the smell. So even paper and wood engraving produce quite a strong smell of burning. You need to have it in a well-ventilated area. There's no question a well-ventilated room and a fan blowing the smoke and odors out is highly recommended. Do not use this in an enclosed space. Like I hinted at, Cubio is controlled entirely through the smartphone app 
and it's actually really good. You can draw basic shapes into it and the laser will vector engrave them or load in images from the internet or your phone's library and convert them for raster or vector engraving using the various built-in modes. By the way, the differences between raster and vector engraving, vector is just a line. The laser traces a continuous path resulting in a thin etched line, the width of the laser itself. And raster means etching of an image by precisely pulsing the laser on and off as it traces back and forth line by line. The machine is capable of both. Through the app, you can set your power and speed levels, then send across to the micro SD card located in the top of the unit for engraving. But kick off a large raster engrave and you'll quickly realize something carefully hidden in the videos online. Raster etching is slow, really slow. All the videos I've seen online are sped up. So here you go. Here it is in real time at max speed. Yep. Look at it go. And as someone with tons of 3D printers, slow isn't always a bad thing. However, with laser systems, you kind of need to be around because you're burning things to make sure nothing goes wrong and catches fire. And the machine also beeps the whole time. Okay, now you can go ahead and disable the beeping if you want during operation, which is kind of a godsend. However, for those big raster engraves, they get old pretty fast. I don't want to be waiting around for like 20 minutes, half an hour for an engrave, and I simply don't have the patience for it. This was meant to be a dove, um, and converting a photo directly, in my experience, doesn't work very well, but you might get better results with more tuning. But look, let's move on to something a little bit more useful, shall we? Smaller engraves are where the money's at, especially using simple black and white images. They're actually really fairly quick, and quite sharp considering that there's no actual real adjustment for the focal length in the system. Because of this, I found Cubio great for marking things with my logo or name in a way that simply can't be rubbed off. You engrave objects. The issue here is that fitting objects into the engraving chamber is a little bit challenging. It's so, so tiny. So as a concession, I did enable expert mode and instead put the enclosure over objects then I would engrave onto those objects. And uh, this gives the safety of the enclosure and a much larger degree of operation. The laser does have built-in movement detection, which will switch the unit off if it gets bumped, which is great and prevents the laser blasting you in the face if the unit happens to fall over. However, you should always still wear the safety laser glasses because when you enable expert mode, you do have to agree to a disclaimer. So always wear those glasses. Using the built-in features of the app is all well and good for beginners, but expert users will quickly want more control, specifically over the much faster vector engraving mode. So to my surprise, Cubio can take standard G-code. And there's a full tutorial I've made on how to create it using Inkscape and some plugins, which is free software. You load it into the micro SD card and then you can access it through the app over Bluetooth on your phone. Neat. Because I have a lot of 3D printers, I was really curious to see what effect the laser would have etching PLA and ABS plastics. And it does work. However, lining up the objects as I'm sort of hinting to is kind of challenging. You place the object under it, you do the preview, you half guess it, then you correct, type in the code again, do another preview, and then eventually you'll get close enough to where you're happy. I would really love to see some sort of grid or better approach to alignment here, though I suppose a jig would make it a lot easier if you're engraving the same shaped object repeatedly. While capable of marking most materials, I wasn't able to blast through the anodized coating of aluminium parts like you can on much higher end industrial laser systems. Um, and this is fair enough, although a little bit disappointing. However, something you might notice is the lack of accuracy when Cubio tries to do anything circular. I struggled with this for a while and after contact with the team, they're aware of the issue and it's to do with the complex calibration of the laser's center point. Because the laser is a fixed point versus being on an XY gantry, the maths would be through the roof complex to minimize distortion of the image. And to be honest, it's a small miracle that it works at all. I also suspect they're trying to tune some of the backlash out of the motion components at the same time. So in future, a better calibration method for tuning this would be great for the end user. I struggled with it. I tried some different points on various bits of paper and while the distortion changed, 
and I got it a little bit better, I couldn't get it perfectly circular. Kibio is a brave product. Originally a Kickstarter, they had their fair share of hurdles bringing a product like this to market, but it actually survived, which is commendable. So many Kickstarters for hardware fail. And it's proven to be a small, capable laser engraver with safety considerations rarely seen. And I really like and appreciate that. The distortion issue is something I think they'll resolve in future issues and maybe firmer updates. And I can really see it being something useful for like a pet shop for engraving tags or a stationery store for engraving custom gifts or maybe out in the field to mark asset tags because you could run this off a power bank pretty easily. The price, however, a little bit painful. US $422 for the module alone or US $645 with the enclosure. And I really do think you need the enclosure. It's built really well with a premium feel. However, that price will definitely put a lot of people off. I feel Cubio invested a lot of their money into the app, which is why the app's so good. And as their first product, it's very user friendly. So that's possibly a reason for the price. But you also need to consider that literally no other laser engraving product I found under $1,000 had the same safety considerations that this one does. So that counts towards quite a lot. You can find purchase links below and full disclosure, QBO reached out to me for a review and no money has changed hands. This video is my own opinion and I will be using the QBO for laser engraving of my future projects here on Maker's Muse. So if you wanna see those, please do consider subscribing because it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly guys. Catch you later, bye.